stop, look, listen, cause you're gonna hear a brand new story about a great engineer. He's the greatest of them all, we claim. Number one pin ends in Casey Jones, his name. Casey Jones, steaming and rolling. Casey Jones, you never have to guess when you hear the tooting of the whistle. It's Casey at the throttle of the cannonball. Casey Jones, steaming and rolling. Casey Jones, you never have to guess when you hear the tooting of the whistle. It's Casey at the throttle of the cannonball express. you ride in the cab with him. You're glad he's an engineer. But when supper's late, you complain. How do you think I feel? They ought to write a cookbook for engineers' wives. Fifty ways to spoil a roast. It probably got derailed again. Dad says the whole structure track from Bankville to Four Corners was laid wrong to start with. I'm going to the depot. Let me come, too. No, son. You stay and finish your lesson. Elvis, how are you? Mr. Carter, you got word. H has anything happened? Well, no, no, nothing. Why, it's past eight. Now, Alice, you should know that no news is good news. It's only bad news that travels fast. Why would the president of the company come all the way from St. Louis to Midvale if something hadn't happened? Oh, please, Mr. Carter, tell me. My dear, the cannonball is late. My being here to meet it has nothing to do with that. I want Casey to give me some information. Information? Casey's bringing me a full report on the condition of the track, from Bankville to Four Corners. It was never laid right to start out with. There are deep gullies on both sides of the right-of-way. If the locomotive should jump the track, it would be bound to turn over. You know that that might have happened today? Why, maybe right now, Casey... <laughs> Make a little bed, Wally. First thing Alice will say when I walk in is Casey Jones. I had a nice roast for supper and now it's spoiled. <laughs> Hello, Alice. What are you doing here? Hello, Miss Carter. Waiting for you. I had a nice roast for supper, and now it's all spoiled. <laughs> How do you just want me a bet? <laughs> <laughs> Got that report for me, Casey? Yes, sir, and it's up to date. Good. There's something you ought to see, in case the board of directors gives you any trouble about authorizing new track. It's up in the cab. Well, let's go and see it. Pardon me. Scrap iron broke loose. Shot right through. That's why we were three hours late. We were spinning to the track like a bug to a cart. <laughs> Tracy. Why, a few inches over and it would have run you through. Oh, honey, quit worrying. As they say, a miss is as good as a mile. A miss is as good as a mile. Mr. Carter, is that what you want? For Casey to go on risking his life day after day until there are no more misses? 
until he scalded himself to death or broken his neck or been crushed. Mr. Carter, in all fairness, don't you think he deserves a promotion? To what kind of position? Mr. Hunter's retiring. I think Casey would make a wonderful district manager. He knows every foot of track and every piece of rolling stock owned by Midwest and Central. Why didn't Casey come here himself, Alice? Why did he send you? Well, he doesn't even know I'm here. Oh, I see. You knew the job of district manager was open and he wanted it, so you... I didn't say that. But you sensed he'd like the job. Well, of course he would. It's a promotion. It's a big step up from the cab of a locomotive where he's been stuck for 14 years. Did Casey tell you why he turned down the chance to be Mr. Hunter's assistant? Why, did you offer it to him? Five years ago. He never told me. If Casey wanted the district managership, I wouldn't consider anyone else. He doesn't want it, Alice. I've offered him office jobs a dozen times. He just keeps saying, I'm an engineer. Our boy is 10 years old. We have him to think of now, his future. I thought young Casey wanted to be an engineer like his father. Whatever his father does seems important to him. Don't you think Casey's work is important? How many lives do you think he's saved by his judgment and courage? Doctors save lives. Lawyers and teachers are helpful. Mr. Carter, our boy is bright. He has a bright, fine mind. He could be anything or do anything that he set his mind to. But now he can't look any higher than the cab of a locomotive. It's you who wants this office job for Casey, isn't it, Alice? Yes, but, but not selfishly, for Casey and our boy. Do you think Casey'd be happy? Well, he'd be alive. Happily alive? Yes. Oh, he'd probably miss the cannonball. And Red Rock and Wally. He'd miss the excitement, even the danger. But he'd still be a railroad man and... And he'd be home for supper on time and he'd wear a suit and a white collar. Is there anything wrong in that? Nothing. Nothing at all. I'll offer Casey the district managership first thing in the morning. Oh, thank you, Mr. Carter. If he takes it, which I doubt, I hope you'll never regret it. Be behind the desk. No, Mr. Carter, I'm an engineer. You said that five years ago. You're getting older now, Casey. You're trying to tell me I'm too old to drive an engine? Well, of course not. You wanted to be an engineer. You've been one for 14 years. Don't you think it's time to look ahead? Your boy is 10 now. Alice isn't a girl anymore. Don't you think he deserves more out of life than you can give them as an engine driver? We don't want for anything. Alice is a great manager. We've always had plenty of good food on the table. Oh, I don't mean money-wise. Never stop to think how much time Alice spends alone waiting, worrying. She's a railroad wife. It's a woman's nature to fret over a man. But I'm sure Alice wouldn't want me to be anything but what I am, an engineer. How about your boy? Does she want him to be an engineer, too? Well, once she sees that he's got his head set on railroad, and boy-like, but man -like, she'll come around. You see? I want you to go home and tell Alice I offered you the job of district manager. Mr. Carter, why turn it all over in her mind? Scared, Casey. Scared? Afraid she knew about this job offer? She'd say she wanted you to take it? No. Then tell her. You will do it. All right, Mr. Carter. I guess I did. <laughs> when is Mr. Carter in town today? I thought I saw him when I went to the store. Yes, it was Mr. Carter. He came down to the number 11. Oh, speaking of Mr. Carter, he offered me Hunter's job. Me, can you imagine? <laughs> the district managership? Well, who did you tell him? Well, for some special reason, he wouldn't have settled if I told you. So I'll go to St. Louis on number 5 for Greg and say thanks. My answer's the same as it's always been. Which is? Then I belong to the cannonball. Alex, you should have seen Wally's eyes. Pop, when I picked up 11 of those between noon and... Hey, I want you to take that position. Well, honey, what are you talking about? I want you to take that district managership. This job's not for me, Alice. 
Why not? Honey, the first time I ever saw you, I was sitting in the cab of a locomotive. I'll never forget that sassy little hat you were wearing, all covered with flowers. I said, look out for bees, sis. You looked up at me real mad and dignified. And then you winked. Remember? Yes. I remember. That was then. But now, every morning when I say goodbye to you, I think it will be our last. I think I'll never see you alive again. That's every morning, Casey. Every morning of my life. Oh, well, it's the only 100% safe man is a dead one. There's some risk in everything. It's not like driving an engine. Driving an engine calls for a special breed of cat. Yes, there's some danger in it, but well, you can handle that. The danger and your fear of the danger. I'm not a railroad man. I'm a woman. And I'm scared to death. She didn't feel like this when we were married. Today's railroading is much safer than it was then. I had more courage then, or less sense. The courage has been beaten out of me or used up. Oh, Casey, I want you to take that district managership. Please. All right, Alice. I wouldn't want you to be unhappy. That's for sure. <laughs> Griswold, there's not much more I can tell you about her. I reckon I left out plenty, too, but you know how it is. You get a feel for her, her ways, her own little tricks and quirks. I appreciate your putting yourself out, Mr. Jones, but it wasn't necessary. I'm familiar with this type of locomotive. Well, the cannonball's not exactly a type. She's herself, and she's a lot of engine. Any further instructions? No, you know your job. I believe so. Seems like a capable fella. Uh, 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 uh. Careful. Alice won't like it if you dirty up that nice, clean collar. I'd like to put a saw blade around the man that invented this. Two side up. <laughs> I guess you know we're all mighty happy that you've taken this big step up. You deserved it. Thanks. It's going to seem mighty funny for a while, commuting every day to St. Louis, sitting behind a desk, knowing the old cannonballs pulling out with Griswold in the cab instead of me. Miss Alice sure is tickled. I ain't never seen her so happy. Yes, it means a lot to Alice. What about Casey Jr.? Well, you know how kids are. Seems that my dad's a district manager. Isn't as good a brag around the schoolyard as my dad's an engineer. But he'll get used to it. Gives me more time with him this way. Be able to take him hunting and fishing, play ball with him, and help him with his lessons. Huh? Well, maybe not help him with his lessons. Boys, I got a highball it up to the city. I'll see you. What are you showing on in your mind? Red Rock, when I was a little boy, I went out and caught myself some pollywogs. Took them home and put them in a glass jar. Ma cooked some gooseberry pies, and she gave my pollywogs gooseberry pies instead of breads and crumbs. You know something, Red Rock? Killed them? Guess what we got coming next, Dad? Blueberry pie. Yeah, I had a big lunch today. I went over to the commercial house with Mr. Carter. I think I'll have a pie tomorrow. Well, I understand Mr. Carter's taking a trip east next month. Leaving you in charge? Yes. Why the long face? I think that's wonderful. Well, I doubt if I can learn this new language by then. <laughs> new language? You mean you have to talk French? Might as well be French. Choctaw. You can't say I got your letter and that the price you're asking is too blamed high. No, you've got to say, gentlemen, your favor of the eighth instant at hand and, and well, in reply, would say, sometime you, you, you got to beg him to let you remain. I beg to remain. Dad, can we go fishing tomorrow? No, son, not tomorrow. I feel I've got a cold coming on. A cold? Why, Casey, I never knew you to have a cold. Well, I've got one now. It's that draft in the office. Draft? I suppose there wasn't a draft in the cab of the cannonball. 
Now, you know, a little fresh air doesn't hurt anyone. But this indoors draft, it's sneaky. Anyway, I just don't feel good. Is the clock right? It hasn't been wrong in 12 years. Well, the cannonballs do. I think I'll walk down to the depot. Griswold might have a few questions to ask now that he's just broke in. Can I come along, Dad? No, you stay here and help your mom. Mom? What's wrong with Dad? He's coming down with a cold. But he used to always be laughing. He don't laugh much anymore. Doesn't. Well, he doesn't. Your father has important things on his mind. Like writing letters and fancy talk. He's helping conduct the business of the railroad. The railroad's business is getting people from one place to another, safe and on time, people and free. That's up to the engineer. Someone has to plan for it, make all the arrangements. Not Dad. He's a doer, not a planner. You help me clear the table. I'm dropping it. Well, I'm in. Molly boy, I'll just raise you two blue chips. I'm dead. Okay, Casey, I'll see you. Watch close. King of hearts. Queen of hearts. Jack of hearts. Nine of diamonds and a seven of clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention, boys. <laughs> the hand I threw in had you both beat. Well, you should have stayed. Casey Jones is the biggest bluffer this side of the alligator. <laughs> <laughs> How about a refill? No more for me, thank you. You see the fire on Crown Hill Slope today on your run? Yeah. Knox Lumber Company wanted us to haul some pine boards down from their sawmill on Crown Hill Slope. I said no. I'm not going to burn up a bunch of people just to save a bunch of pine planks. The fella named that one stretch dead man Spur. Sure knew what he was doing. Excuse me. I'm looking for Casey Jones. Well, I'm Jones. What can I do for you? I, I was over to your house. Your missus told me I'd find you here. My name is Barlow. My farm's on the south slope of Crown Hill. Fire reach your place? No. Stop just above me. There's a stony ridge acts as a fire break. But the whole hill's ringed round with it now, and there's maybe 50 people up there cut off by the fire. They're in terrible shape, mostly from burns. One woman broke her leg, and and there ain't a drop of water. How do you know? Jed Latham fought his way through down to my place. Found him about sundown, crawling along the ground, trying to call my name. Me and my wife worked over him a couple of hours, but it was no use. We've got to get the cannonball rolling as quickly as possible. Red Rock, run out the freight boss. Tell him to load the flat cars with barrels of water. We need the roadmaster, his crew, medical supplies, and Doc Meredith. Right. Wait just a minute, Mr. Jones. You ordered me to drive an engine over Dead Man's Spur through a forest fire? The cannonball's the best locomotive we've got. You're our engineer. This tomfool stunts no job for an engineer. You need a, a fire eater from the circus. But you heard what the man said. There's 50 people up there that'll die unless they get our help. But you can't get the train through. Well, maybe not, but we can try. Not with me at the throttle. No, with me. I'm going to go home and change my clothes, boys. Get things rolling, will you? Have some coffee, Mr. Barlow. What did that man Barlow want? Alice, there's 50 people cut off by the fire on Crown Hill. Some are in pretty bad shape, and they've got no water or medicine. I've got to get the cannonball through. Well, what about Griswold? He won't risk it. I shouldn't have asked him to. This job is strictly for volunteers. Casey. Alice, we've got to try. Can't you understand? I've packed your work clothes away, but I'll get them out for you.
doctor will need a nurse. Good girl. Everybody to tie wet claws over their nose and mouth. <laughs> right, Doc. I'll bring out some canteens of water. <laughs> folks, and food. And cooked it on the way. Doc Meredith is aboard with us. Pass the word along to those that need medical attention. Some of you folks come with me and help with the water and supplies. Wait, I gave you a rough trip, Doc. You all right? Oh, just fine, Casey. Everybody's all right. Alice. Don't argue with me now, Casey. I have to help the doctor. Whatever possessed you to take a fool chance like this? Well, engineers are a special breed of cat, Casey. They take pride in what they do, and they have a lot of pure cussedness that makes them know they can do it, even when common sense tells them they can't. But you're not an engineer. No, I'm an engineer's wife. The best. I'm Mrs. Casey Jones. Come on, for now, we'll be seeing you when Casey comes a-rollin' by a 
again With a steam and boiler and a smoking stack And the wheels strike a thunder from the railroad track There'll be Casey Jr. and the Red Rock too Fireman Wally and the rest of the crew In a thrilling adventure that's a lot of fun When Casey takes the throttle for another run Casey Jones, steaming and a rolling Casey Jones, you never have to guess When you hear the juicing of the whistle It's Casey as the throttle